But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Acts 4, verses 19 and 20. When I was in high school, we had to do a paper defense in front of our class. One of the papers from the other senior honors English class had been quite controversial. The teacher knew that I didn't agree with its tenets, but I saw nothing positive coming out of making some sort of religious speech in a public high school English class. Unfortunately, the teacher had no desire to let me off the hook. I didn't raise my hand at the end, so he asked me directly, what did you think of Name's paper? I stated that it was well organized and easy to follow. I was hoping he'd stop at that. Nope. Did you agree with Name? I admitted that no, I did not. Why not? I responded, my faith in God will not allow me to agree with her conclusion. And that was that. I'd said the words he was fishing for. Red-faced, spittle flying, he yelled at me, there is no God. You will not mention God in my classroom. I never returned to his classroom. I finished my senior year of English by a correspondence course, much to the dismay of both my mother and my guidance counselor. I still agree with the decision that my 17-year-old self had made to try to not instigate anything, but also to not back down. In the passage from Acts above, Peter and John had been brought before a council because they were speaking publicly about the life and ministry of Yeshua. They had been drawing many people to him. They had even been performing miracles in his name. The council was torn as to what to do. On the one hand, the council didn't think it was safe to punish the apostles. This was not out of fear of God or because they knew it was wrong, but out of fear of the people. At the same time, they didn't want the apostles to continue speaking of Yeshua. The council viewed this as a form of contagion that would, if it was allowed, continue to spread. They told the apostles that they were never again to speak about Yeshua either, either publicly or privately. They still believed that they, as the council, had the right to force every single Israelite to bend to their own whims and desires. They gave no rationale for why Peter, John, or the other apostles should keep quiet. They couldn't show that any harm had come by it. They couldn't show that it was false. They certainly wouldn't admit the real reason, that it would have shown them to be hypocrites who were more interested in the show of religion than in a real heart for God. So they simply threatened the apostles and declared that preaching of Yeshua was to be considered a heinous crime because they said that it was a heinous crime, circular reasoning at its finest. So what should be our example when we are told by others, politely or not, shut up and sit down. There's no place for your beliefs here, whether that be at work, in school, in politics, at dinner. Certainly we should be polite and caring. We should be respectful of others and not attempt to denigrate their humanity. But that does not mean we have to hide what we believe. Yeshua sometimes told his followers to be quiet. That is true. There were times when individuals were told to not speak of the miracles he performed. Other times he very explicitly called his followers to active speech. And even more so we are told not to deny him. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather Fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 10, 27-33 So be smart, but be bold. Have no fear to acknowledge what the Lord has done in your life. Let the Spirit of Hashem, the Ruach HaKodesh, fill you with His wisdom so that you will know what to say and when to say it.